In today's video, I'm going to be showing you GitHub Copilot Chat and its capabilities. So by the end of the video, hopefully you'll have an understanding on how the tool works, its unique features, and also some of its limitations. So you'll have a better insight on whether it's something that's worth incorporating into your programming workflow. So to begin, one thing that I want to note is currently GitHub Copilot Chat is behind a waitlist. So if you want access to GitHub Copilot Chat, first make sure you have an active subscription to GitHub Copilot, then head over to this URL here, github.com github copilot slash uh, chat waitlist sign up and join make sure to join that list if you'd like access to this so there's no firm date on when this will be out hopefully i'd imagine by the end of the year it will be rolled out across the board uh, to any paying github users but just so you know it is currently behind a waitlist so it took me about one to two months or so to get access uh, and i just got access to this last week so i've been playing around with this ever since so Another thing to note is there are some other options uh, that you can request access for for some other features that they're working on. So Copilot for pull requests or Copilot for docs. If you want to uh, have a look at githubnext.com, you can go and see some of the uh, things that they have in their pipeline. And if you'd like to experiment with one of them and get on a wait list, go ahead and request access there. So. I'm gonna be showing you GitHub Copilot Chat in VS Code Insider's Edition. So the reason why I'm using Insider Editions is that's what they told me to do within the instructions. So uh, I did try and use this within my regular VS Code. I did see the extension was there, but it didn't work as it does in the Insider's Edition. So even though I have everything set up on my normal VS Code, I will be using the VS Code Insider's Edition for this. So the first thing to note is once you have it installed, uh, you'll have this uh, chat window here. And one thing to note, you do have to have GitHub Copilot installed. Uh, this is a dependency. So uh, without GitHub Copilot, you won't be able to access the features. So make sure you have it installed, log in, do all that good stuff to make sure that it works. So once you have it set up, you'll have this interface here. And right off the bat, uh, you do have the uh, slash command. So as it shows right in that prompt box, so there's seven slash commands. So explain is pretty self-explanatory. If you just uh, click enter, you can see it will go ahead and explain the bit of code for you. So pretty self-explanatory. I won't go through demonstrating all of these, but uh, just to sort of run through what they all are. So ext, that gives you the ability to uh, write extensions within VS Code. So if you're interested in extension development, that can be helpful for you. Fix is self-explanatory. So if you have a bug or a typo or some issue within your code that you're looking to have resolved, highlight it, uh, click fix, and run that command um, help self-explanatory but one thing to note with help i will show you this one it is super helpful when you get this plugin you can sort of get a sense on what you can do with it what you can't do uh, and definitely something worth looking into when you first get the uh, the the extension so tests if you'd like to generate unit tests for your functions or applications that's uh, there's a command in there for that uh, the VS Code, another cool thing with uh, this extension is it has the context of VS Code itself. So if you have any questions on where to find something or you know how do I add uh, a particular uh, feature or something along those lines or a, a particular setting, where do I find that? Uh, you put in your command, so let's say, where is the settings object in VS Code? So you could have done this within the command prompt, like you know, like you're used to uh, in VS Code. But uh, this also gives you the ability to click options, and it will route you to the particular place within VS Code. So if you want to see, okay, here's the JSON op uh, option for it, you can just click. You'll have that prompt come up, uh, you know, uh, as if you were writing it, and then you click, can click enter and then see it there. So super helpful if you're looking to, you know, change a view maybe or uh, do something like that, configure your settings. Um, it's all right there. So handy to have that built in for sure. So another thing is just the clear command. So clear, as you might expect, you type clear and it will clear your chat window. 
So those are those are sort of some housekeeping things. But now when you're uh, actually using it within a programming context, uh, let's just say uh, write me a more efficient version of this function. So you see, I'm not putting anything within the code that I have here on the right pane into the chat window. It has that context. So if you have the window open, it will be able to understand the context. Now, one thing that I haven't tested too much are on particularly long files. So this might be more uh, relevant for, you know, if you're working on something within production or you have something that has, you know, there's just a, you know, a, a sizable amount of code it might struggle with the context of it if it's you know an incredibly large code base or workspace that you're working in but like i mentioned i haven't uh, tested that too much myself i've been using little cases like this just trying to see and flesh out what it can do and can't do so one thing that i thought was neat with this is it will also give you suggestions that you can just simply click similar to that vs code functionality so if you just click this you can say okay can you explain how a hash table works in the two sum function so maybe you're practicing for a whiteboarding session or or, or something along those lines and you're learning different algorithms and different structures on, uh, you, you know, like how, how to implement your code. Uh, this can be a perfect uh, tutor for you. You know, it can be something that's within your code editor. You know, you can try and write your functions out. And then if you run into a blocker, maybe you can run the fix command and see, okay, that fixed it, but then maybe you don't understand what exactly is happening there. So you can have it explain it or, you know, go back and forth or ask the time complexity. So you can sort of imagine uh, how you could use this in an interview case, but there's a lot of other ways that you can use this uh, as you might imagine. So just off the bat, so just with this simple example, so I have my brute force solution of two sum here. And if I want to implement my uh, new version here, there's a couple options that I have here. So one thing to note with this icon here, so it's insert at cursor. So I think a lot of people, when they first click this, they're playing around with this and they just click this button without having the tooltip come up, they might expect that it would just have the, you know, know it all to actually replace the function, but this is replace at cursor. So it doesn't quite have that ability to just, you know, you, uh, put in your, your code, uh, you know, on the right hand window here. And then on the left, you start to have a conversation like fix this, fix this. You still have to uh, make sure you target where you want it and whatnot. So just to sort of demonstrate at that. So see, I have my cursor here. If I just bring it down here, you can uh, have it down there. Now, while I'm on this, uh, I'm just going to close the window for a moment and bring this up. So my favorite feature of uh, GitHub Copilot chat is the ability to have the prompt window in line. So what do I mean by that? So say if I wanted to have that same uh, uh, question or, 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 or um, query what rather of, you know, it make my function more efficient, I could do that right within line. So on Mac, if you click command I or on Windows or Linux, I believe it's control I, you can have this prompt window come up. So if I just say, make this perform better, we'll give it a moment. Now, the thing I like about this view is it gives me a diff so I can see exactly what it's removing and replacing. So you can see here, largely what it's replacing is the nested for loop. And instead it's adding uh, a hash object and then it's doing the uh, necessary check for the hash map there. So if I want to accept it, I just click, click command enter. And then there we go. I have a more performant, uh, piece of code there. So I love that because it's, you know, I have the keyboarding or, or key binding rather. I just hit command I, write in what I want, and then command enter to accept or escape to reject. So I think personally, I'm going to be using this view a whole lot more than this view. I think it is 
probably the least resistance uh, that I've experienced when leveraging an LLM. So just to sort of talk on resistance. So um, you might have had the experience of say you're working with ChatGPT and you're copying things back and forth, say from the uh, ChatGPT window into VS Code, and then you might do some edits and then you might bring it back over to ChatGPT. So the thing with that, obviously it causes a lot of friction because you have to remember that any tweaks you make within your code editor, that LLM prompt window doesn't have all that um, uh, context. So you have to always be mindful of updating it. And it's really just a pain, right? You're copying it back and forth. Whereas this, it's right there. It has your files, it has your workspace, and it has the environment that you want to work in. So that's why I think this is pretty, pretty amazing. So just a, a few other housekeeping things here. I'm not going to go through uh, building out like an application or anything like that, but just really show you some of the, uh, the, the use cases that I found useful and you can sort of extrapolate for yourself, uh, you know, how it could be applicable in what you do day to day and how it can improve what you want to do. So another thing uh, to note is you do have the saved history here. So if you have uh, you're, you, if you want to save the uh, chat history, you do have that built in. Similar to ChatGPT, you have your history on the left-hand side there, and you can um, you, you know have your your chat history that you can reference reference back into. So another thing, you can open it within an editor view. So if you don't like that side pane, you can have it within here, just within another tab in your VS Code. So that might be a more useful um, you know more useful maybe if it's you know you really want to have a conversation with it rather than just having it pop in and out uh, or maybe if you're really trying to figure out a piece of code or, or what have you so if I bring this back and close this out um, uh, other things so we can open it in the editor and then we can clear it from here so we went through the slash commands now one of the things that I wanted to show you was now I'm actually going to open up an editor one more time here and one thing to note actually, so there are, it's still experimental. So you will get errors like this. So it's good that one actually came up. So it's not uh, perfectly polished. Um, and there are some limitations which I am going to touch on. So this being one of them, and actually while this uh, came up, if we just touch on limitations now. So one thing that I've noticed as a limitation, which isn't necessarily a gripe on GitHub Copilot chat, but just LLMs in particular for the context of coding, is it doesn't know the most recent and relevant information that you might be looking for. So an example of that is, so say you're a JavaScript or Node.js developer and you're used to relying on some libraries, say some NPM libraries. Now the thing with that is, say if you wanted to use a new library like Langchain, it doesn't have the context. So if you're asking questions on, okay, I want to start a, uh, a Langchain application and I want it to be a, you know, an agent that does this, that, and the other thing, it won't know that. And it can also come up in other situations of say there's a library where before the model was trained and to now there were breaking changes between now and then it might give you suggestions that uh, aren't right or will cause errors. So just to be mindful of that, if you, you are using this and you do have a lot of external libraries, or if you're trying to build an application with external libraries uh, and there have been breaking changes or, or things like that, it can become an issue. So, and also around that, sometimes you will see hallucinations if you're really, really trying to push the limits on this and have it like, you know, scaffold out like an entire application for you. You can run into some issues. But for things like, you know, uh, fixes and tweaks and improvements and refactoring, I think it does a really excellent job. So since this uh, pane isn't working right now, I'll actually just demonstrate it here. So if you look in my workspace here, I have one file. I have an index.js uh, and that's it in my directory. Now, the cool thing with Copilot chat is you can have it uh, answer questions that you might have otherwise, you know, been Googling for or stack overflowing for, uh, for say, if you wanted to have a terminal command. So let's say, uh, an example of, I want to create a handful of files in the terminal. What's the command 
to create create oh create them and let's just say I want a index HTML style CSS and script.js so if I click enter here you can see okay you use the touch command so it gives you that response but similar to the code functionality where you can push it in at the cursor or copy it you actually have the ability to run it in the terminal so if you simply click run in terminal you'll see okay now you have that within the terminal and you can just go ahead and run that so now that I ran that, you'll see, okay, now we have a handful of files here from our terminal. So that's just a, a simple example, but you can imagine if maybe there's something from the terminal that you, you know, you need and, you know, you, you really have to reference, um, um, you know, a, another resource. Like if you're trying to like recursively crawl a directory and do this, that, and the other thing, what's the command uh, to do that? And this is going to be an excellent tool for stuff like that. So I think a lot of people have been looking for a tool um, that uh, integrates LLMs within the terminal. And while this isn't directly in the terminal, it's uh, a pretty nice, uh, you know, complementary piece to terminal commands. So I just wanted to point that out as well. So. Uh, just minor things to point out from here. So there is the ability to, uh, you know, show that this is a good answer or a bad answer. So I'm sure the GitHub team would definitely appreciate that if you, you know, you rate your answers, uh, if you're willing to do that. If not, obviously not a big deal. And then in terms of any other features, I'm just looking at my notes here. Um, it does seem like they're using uh, GPT 3.5 and not 4 yet. Uh, I believe 4 is going to come out uh, when they release GitHub Copilot X, which uh, similar, there isn't a firm date as to when that will be rolling out uh, to the masses yet. So that's pretty much it. Um, there are some other key bindings that you can run through. I'm not going to run through these here. Uh, I ran through the main one, you know, just having that command I, I think is going to be huge uh, for developers that leverage this in VS code. It's, you know, it's a huge feature that, uh, you know, I'm going to be using day to day. It's similar to, there was a, a, um, a code editor that gained a, a significant amount of popularity, uh, all of a sudden called cursor on GitHub on, um, Yes, GitHub, and that uh, code editor, one of its uh, core features was exactly that functionality is have a key binding, bring up a prompt, and then based on that prompt, uh, you can uh, see the diff and, you know, it's a very similar experience to that, uh, what I demonstrated earlier on. So if you found this video useful, um, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. If I get access to any other GitHub Copilot um, features or wait lists that I'm on, I'll make sure to make a video and do a little overview like this for you. And yeah, if you have any questions on what you'd like to see demonstrated or, or what it works well or not well in, just let me know in the comments below. But otherwise, uh, yeah, hit subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.